John from RipeWave Audio back for a fifth and final time with the Onkyo Pioneer and Integra flagship AV receivers. And this is the installment you've been waiting for, what we thought of the sound characteristics. Which one sounds better and how do they compare against other AV receivers and processors out there in the market in this range under $5,000? These are specifically the Onkyo TXRZ70, which sells for $2,800, the Pioneer Elite VSX LX805, which is just under $3,000, and the Integra DRX 8.4, which sells for $3,300. Now, if you've been following this series, or if you haven't, you can go back and watch these. We had partner one where we compared these against its nearest competitors, and then we unboxed them and had our first look. And then in part two, we got these set up, did the speaker configurations, and then we did a room calibration using Direct Live from a mobile app. And then in part three, we went into room calibration further because these support multiple room calibration methods. They also have a proprietary uh, method which Onkyo and Integra use AccuEQ, whereas Pioneer has their own MCACC, uh, which is largely the same with a few differences. And then in part four, we did an in-depth review of the user experience. So we're here today to talk about the sound, but we have a few other points that we want to cover down on but that we missed in the other videos before we get to the sound comparison. So bear with me for a minute here. One of the items, and this is something that a lot of you care about, is how quickly these things start up from a cold boot or from standby. We looked at this for other models like Arcam and Emotiva and Monoprice and from cold boot and as well as with the Sony, the cold boot can take up to 90 seconds and at best 37 seconds with the Arcam. But we're glad to see the cold boot starts on these are very quick. They're all under five seconds. This is not a scientific measurement, but we can tell when things are wildly different. And these are the fastest startup units that we've seen to date of everything that we tested, not just the ones that we've started doing some formal measurements on, but I, I know for a fact that these start up quicker than anything else. And then from standby, it's pretty much the same, although I thought the Onkyo did better with its standby startup then with its cold boot startup seemed to be slower than everything else, but it made up for the difference from a, a standby uh, power on. But these are all under five seconds, which is all quite reasonable. And I wish all receivers and processors started up this quickly. In fact, where the other models give you a screen that says almost ready or starting up, system starting, these don't even have such a uh, display. It goes right to you know, whatever it's going to be for the default, the, the volume or the sound mode uh, when they start up. So great job on the startup sequence. The other thing I'll mention here are the fans. These have two fans over the HDMI board. Uh, and these do come on, and I can force these on. If I turn the volume knob up to 60, it's like Clockwood, always in that same position. If these things are not under load, it's just powered up, these are cool. If I take it up to 60, the fans kick on and you can hear them. Albeit in practice, I really haven't heard these too much, uh, but they are noticeable when they do turn on. They're not as loud as the Anthem AVM 70 that we brought in. That I could hear over the music. These, at least when they come on, I can't usually hear over the music, but um, we'd rather not have an audible fan in a unit like this. But I say it's not as bad, but not as good as other uh, units that we've seen. One question that came in from the field is, can you power this on remotely if you have other zones? And if you're using the mobile app, you can power this on through the mobile app and you can adjust which zones are active and adjust the volume for them. So I think that answers that question. I got a couple other questions on video uh, features like HDMI testing, which these do have a HDMI test page on it and things like lip sync and all that. 
I really don't go into detail in our analysis. And the other question we always get is, you know, can you do a review on the amplifiers? And I, I've done that in the past. I think I did it with the RZ50, but I, I really want to perfect a process where I can come up with repeatable, consistent results that are as scientific as possible. I don't have the test geared really to do uh, um, measurements on amplifiers. So this is why I've stuck to the other features, the processor side of these versus getting into the amplifiers. The other thing that I tested out was how did these handle DSD Super Audio CDs? Now DSDs, they can come in a two channel format. And when we ran this and part of what we noticed is the Integra for whatever reason doesn't have a pure direct mode. They have something that's called DSD direct, uh, whereas Pioneer and Onkyo have a pure direct mode. But in those cases, whether it, whatever it's called, uh, it's, when it's given a two channel DSD, it's only doing left and right, not putting the subwoofer on and not adding to any of the other speakers. When you put these into stereo mode for the Integra or direct mode for everything else, you get the two front channels and your two subwoofers or up to two subwoofers and nothing else. When you run any of the surround sound formats, Atmos, DTSX, Neural X, Oral 3D, in all cases, it upmixes the 7.2.4 with a DSD 2.0 source. Then I popped in a five channel source, uh, Super Audio CD. I always use uh, Dark Side of the Moon uh, Super Audio CD. So that's a 5.1 source. It does give you out both subwoofer channels as you might expect. So you're getting a 5.2.0, whether it's the direct DSD, pure direct uh, mode, or it's a stereo or direct mode, you're getting it. But when you go to stereo mode on the Integra, it's down mixing it to 2.2.0 because it doesn't have those two modes of direct and pure direct with the Integra for whatever reason. But with Pioneer and Onkyo, you got the pure direct, which you do 5.2.0, and then direct mode is still gonna give you 5.2.0 because this is a 5.1 signal, and then it just delivers it to both subwoofers. And then for the surround modes, Atmos, DTSX, Neural X, Oral 3D, it's all up mixing to 7.2.4, as expected. Now, Oral 3D, we were generously given a couple of demo discs from a new Oral uh, company, and we did, you know, use this, and it, it did play the Oral 3D uh, sample tracks and, and videos very well. I mean, it's an impressive format. These particular models only support layouts for 9.1 and 11.1 Oral. So, you know, the 11.1, and it's the 11.1 that mimics the Dolby Atmos, a 7.1 with four heights. And that's what you get. And then you can do some parameter changes. You can do it a uh, listening mode as oral 3D, which is up mixing as much as possible, or a native format with no up mixing. And then how much oral matic to apply. This can be small, medium, large, speech, and movie, which defaults to medium. And then the strength of that, uh, and the default is 12. I think it goes, the scale goes up to 15. And it's the same for all three models. So that's the Oral 3D on that. The sound quality. Where do we rate this? Well, these fit in the top tier. I felt, and we had the Sony here, the STR uh, AZ 7000 ES when we first got these. And I could do the ABC with it. And I thought these sounded as good as the Sony, or I thought the Sony sounded as good as these. Uh, and, and so they're in that top tier, but just coming into the top tier. Now where Sony has an advantage is it's got that wider sound stage. So when you put this on the map here, Sony goes a little bit further on the spaciousness scale. In fact, it's off the scale for any of these models but the sound quality isn't as rich as what you would get from a Yamaha or a Emotiva. And the same goes with these. You don't get them as rich as those, 
but they're still top tier. That's very close. Now, when you look at this table, you'll notice that Integra, Pioneer, and Onkyo are just represented by one dot. And that's because, to me, they sounded the same. And even when you think about the balanced outputs on the back of the Integra for the front, left, and right, as well as the subwoofers, and of course, the Pioneer has the balanced outputs for the subwoofer as well. But that's going to help you mostly when you think you have some noise. Now, I don't have any noise in between here. So when I did the comparison, they sounded the same, whether I was running out the balanced or the unbalanced connection. So keep that in mind here, the differences between these. If you can notice something, I believe you'll only find it to be subtle. So you're going to be picking these brands, Pioneer versus Integra versus Onkyo, based on your preferences and how they've implemented the features and how you like to interact with these products. And I think if you are trying to decide based on sound quality, I think you're safe. Anything in this top tier is going to serve you well. If you want that spaciousness that the special Sony features want, then maybe you're going to the Sony. But other than that, I would pick these based off of what you felt uh, was the best feature blend is you have a brand preference. Maybe you just like the way something looks over another one and that's perfectly fine. You're the one that has to use it. So I, I would look at it that way. Anything in this top tier is going to serve you well from a sound perspective, then look at features and then look at cosmetics and usability and pick your model. Uh, and then, you know, the Marantz Cinema 40 and the 4800 and the Onkyo TXRZ50, the model below this, was in the second tier. Uh, not as rich, not as spacious. We're going to be monitoring closely the Denon uh, AVR X6800H, which is going to come out, I think, early next year. So pretty soon. And that's Will that go up into the first tier? That's what we're going to be interested in. Plus, you're going to have those additional channels so you can do front wides and a DTSX Pro and all that. And of course, the Cinema 50 and the 3800, I think, definitely is notable difference um, between the, the uh, others. So that goes into a third tier. To finalize up this, what were the pros and cons through the series? I mean, definitely a pro is the sound quality on all of these. Top tier, maybe not good as some of the others, but really good. These have lots of features. The fact that it has Oral 3D is good, but it's not the full Oral 3D. So it could, there's a little bit of a con there that I don't have on the slide, which is it's not supporting, you know, the center height channels. It's not supporting the top center or voice of God channel uh, as other Oral 3D implementations. So it's not the best Oral 3D implementation because you really can't do a full Oral 13.1 with this. This is really an Oral 11.1, which is seven base, four heights, uh, mimicking the Dolby Atmos layout. Uh, and this is the way this is configured. So you're not getting new speaker layouts with the introduction of Oral that came in September of this year. Now there is DSD support. And uh, I was able to play, play both two-channel and multi-channel discs uh, without an issue. I don't think it's uh, do doing as uh, strong of a DSD format as other models, but you can play these back. You do have flexible room calibration choices, albeit I think they were uh, uh, not ideal in some cases. So uh, when it comes down to, let's say, direct live, I don't think the implementation is as good as other direct lives. For example, there was errors that popped up every time uh, I ran the calibration. It was going to do the phase correction thing, and it would come up with an error. Uh, so I had to keep rerunning it. And it takes a long time to download the filters to these devices, only even to the point where Dirac Live, in their release notes for the latest version, talks about it can take a minute longer, which is more like 10 minutes longer, uh, to do the download. So that is um, something to note there. While there's a lot of choices, uh, the, some of the implementation isn't as good as others. This is Rune Ready. Uh, that's a new feature that was added. It was Rune Tested, now Rune Ready. There's integration tools, there's triggers in the back of these, particularly if you go to the Integra or the Pioneer. 
Uh, the Onkyo is not as much for integration. Uh, Dirac base control options for these, they're available. Now Marantz, uh, well say Den, yeah, Den and Marantz have just announced that they're going to be adding um, Dirac base control to their units. No word yet about the new Dirac art format, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how they progress as well, as well as all these brands on that new system. Other cons were, you know, the remotes were hard to read. The front panels are hard to re uh, read. The buttons on the front of the Onkyo, forget it. Uh, the remotes, the backlight, it shows you where the buttons are, but you can't read the words. Uh, although somebody wrote in, they said they don't have any trouble, but maybe it's my eyes. Uh, the front panels, you know, an outdated panel. It's not a modern panel on the front here. The on-screen um, display quality is embarrassing. Uh, jagged fonts. I mean, the you, know, you think in in all these years they could have upgraded that. Uh, having to cycle through all the sound modes. Come on, I mean, give us at least on the web page a pull down menu where I can random go to each one of the the sound modes. The fans. I mean, I'm not a fan of the fans. Uh, there's only minor differences between these brands. I I don't mind. I think there should be some differentiation. We had this conversation online. With, with some of you, it, it, it's good to have a differentiate. If these get too close, then why have three brands? So, but these little insignificant differences, I wouldn't bother with those, but things like having THX in one and not another, or one supporting one type of room correction, one support, you know, the, these type of differences um, would matter more. Maybe something that's wildly, I mean, at least the front panels look totally different on these. So, um, though, you know, those are some of my comments. What are your comments about the pros and the cons? Did I miss some of these? Uh, do you feel like, you know, I, I misjudged some of these? That feedback would be useful to the Ripe Wave Audio community. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Of course, we have our Patreon channel at www.patreon.com slash ripeway if you want to take your involvement to the next level. Or you could hit that one-time donation button we've been getting several of those in lately. And thank you, thank you, thank you on that. And uh, if you want to be notified when the next video is posted, it doesn't cost anything to hit that bell notification. So until the next time, keep evolving your audio experience.